What is going on, man? We back with another video. This is the creepiest kids shows. I don't know how this going to go. I don't know. Too, is SpongeBob creepy? You would say? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. The theories about SpongeBob is scary, though. I can say it's creepy. The theories that I've seen about SpongeBob. Next. Lovely ladies, go ahead, introduce yourself. Let them know where they can find you at. What's good, y'all? My name is Day. Y'all can follow me on Instagram at brownskin.day. What's up, y'all? My name is Leah, big baby Conley over here. You can find me on TikTok, Twitch, Kick, YouTube, Instagram, anywhere, any social media, you're gonna find me at Big Baby Conley. Hi guys, I'm Denise. You can find me on TikTok at the Basies and Instagram at Denise's Diary. Hey guys, it's Cassie G. Make sure y'all subscribe to my YouTube channel at Cassie G, C A S S I Space G. In fact, they're the opposite. They're usually the most bright and happy, sweet. Kids shows aren't normally something that's supposed to be scary. <laughs> in fact, they're the opposite. They're usually the most bright and happy, sweet Thanks. and kind pieces of media you can find in the world. But sometimes there are kids shows that are a little darker, ones that traumatize you. I remember back in elementary school around Halloween time, my teacher decided she would put something on for the class to watch. She had done this before, so we were all excited. I was excited. We all sat in rows on the colorful rug, crisscross applesauce, everybody's knees colorful, touching. Right? And she wrote out days. one of those old big TVs, the ones that give you that fuzzy feeling when you touch them. I was stoked. I was excited to see SpongeBob or Shrek or whatever it could be. But when she turned on the TV, it wasn't Shrek or SpongeBob. It wasn't? It was Goosebumps. <laughs> Some of y'all may oh, have a guy in the way just being too young. But when I tell y'all this show used to give me nice. What y'all know about Goosebumps? That's one of my oh favorite shows. Oh my god, show. I hated I that I when I was little. <gasps> no, I hated it when I was younger. I used to love that show. Mm. Mm. I, yeah, that I mean, like, that, that shit did scare me when I was younger. Wait. It was It was creepy. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be facing my fears and I'll be going over some of the episodes that were buried deep, deep in my subconscious Ooh. with y'all. And in the end, I'll go over the episode that scared me the most. Oh, that right thing right so there. So strap in. That one. Starting with the one known as the scariest to the general public. And this one, we follow these two girls who stumble across this novelty shop in the middle of the night and straight off the jump, turn around and go home. Please. These two girls are Sabrina, aka the main character's best friend, and our main character, Carly Beth. What kind of name? In typical horror fashion, <laughs> our main character is fascinated by the novelty shop and wants to go in. I mean, it has scary masks and an ominous man watching them. Who wouldn't want to go in? But before she can even take a step into the shop, her best friend Sabrina tells her no. Thankfully, that's her friend. But after they leave, we yeah. see why Carly Beth was so interested in those scary looking masks. You see, Carly Beth is constantly being bullied in the form of people scaring her. These boys from school, her best friend, her little brother, <laughs> all be scaring her because she's a big, big scaredy cat. And honestly, relatable. Not anymore, but I used to be the most sensitive, easy to scare Thanks, kid on the yo. face of the earth. And let me tell you, crying at every horror movie gets old. And it was starting to get old for Carly Beth too. The next day at school was the last straw. During lunchtime, the two boys that scared her from the night before come over to her table to apologize, saying they were just joshing around, having some fun, but Carly Beth was not having it. She tells them, whatever, yeah, just go them. away. But when they go away and Carly Beth takes a bite of her sandwich, she notices this PB&J is a little more chewy than normal and tastes what? a little, Ew. a little Ew. like, oh, 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 no. worm in her oh, sandwich. Bro. Man. That's not even a prank. That gotta be some form of oh, attempted yeah, murder. Fighting. Cause what no the sorry. actual? This was the yes, last straw for Carly bro. Beth. She had been humiliated. Her self-esteem was destroyed. She was so mad, she destroyed her duck costume. It was getting serious. She wanted revenge. She was tired of being the one who's constantly scared. She wanted to finally be the one doing some of the scaring. So she goes to the one place where she knows she could find something scary. The novelty shop. Carly Beth gets in and is met with this creepy old dude who although is hesitant at first, lets Carly Beth shop around. My dog. Carly Beth browsing around oh, and she's yeah. not really rocking with any of the masks. They're not scary enough. Conveniently though, she finds this back room that has exactly what she's looking for. A scary mask. But when she goes to grab mm. it, the old dude comes out of nowhere and tells oh, her, he creepy. Nah, he look like the masks mask. are not he for sale. Like Carly Beth persists like to try to give him a whopping 30 bucks. Hold on, 30 bucks? 30 the bucks. old man That's still says no. Can. Come on, dude. 30 <laughs> bucks? That's like a meal at Chick-fil-A. What are you doing? Old dude tells her she's not ready for the responsibility of the mask. It's super dangerous. <laughs> but while he's explaining, Carly <laughs> Beth steals the mask and runs yeah, out. Yeah. She's a thug. And for some yeah. reason, the old dude doesn't chase her. He just yells. Why is he green? Closes the door. 
I mean, oh, I Cardi B finally got what she needed to get man. revenge. Oh, on he the said book, you fried. She was gonna <laughs> regret that real soon. Cardi Beth gets home and immediately puts the mask to work, scaring her little brother. And that was only the beginning. She suits up for Halloween, taking with her this weird replica of herself that her mom made for her. Uh, I what? don't know. And picks what? up Sabrina to go looking for the bullies. She's hunting. And this is what we noticed: the mask is making Cardi Beth act a little more peculiar. <laughs> Y'all like that word? Y'all like that? She's more aggressive, scaring random <laughs> kids, scaring random moms, and even scaring Sabrina. Shut Sabrina up. confronts her about this, and Carly West's only answer is, the mask made me do it. Okay, so if you grab me like that again and I'll punch you, just know my fist made me do it. Carly Beth eventually <laughs> runs away for some reason and stumbles upon exactly who she wanted to find the bullies and a perfect oh. setting too. She approaches them and they're immediately wetting their pants. Talking about how they was just goofing around and they only did those things to Carly Beth because they liked her. Oh, how could we all be so <laughs> stupid? The old worm in the sandwich, Mue. Eh? Real panty dropper, forgot about that one. Cardi Beth successfully scares them off after the <laughs> replica head of herself wishes to the boys, help me. And Cardi Beth afterwards buries the replica head and returns home. I'm sure at this point, some of y'all already know what's going on, but it gets even clearer when Cardi Beth gets home and is finally ready to take off the mask. But when she tries to, it hurts. She can't it's seem to so take it off right? for some reason. So she asks Sabrina to help. Oh, no. Sabrina goes to check. She sees there's no line between the mask and Carly Beth's skin. She even runs to the bathroom huh? and sees the eyes in the mirror aren't her eyes anymore. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, oh, she has scary. become one scary. with the mask. This was insanely mm. scary. And as a <laughs> then it's stuck as your Halloween mask? Heck nah. It's bad enough huh. that it's this mask because let's be real. If you were stuck looking like that, you are not pulling a single person. Like nah. just scratch having kids <laughs> off the list, please. But I think if it was one of those random funny masks, it'd be even mask worse. <laughs> like imagine just trying to trick or treat one year. Your mask gets stuck on you and now you're stuck as the 44th president Barack Obama or something. Like I ain't signed up for this. Oh. Harley Beth runs back to the novelty shop where the old dude is waiting for her and he explains to her that that's her new face now. Cardi Beth understandably Aww. starts tweaking out, but the old man interrupts her and tells her that there might be one last chance to remove it with a symbol of love. Self love. Okay. He starts explaining to her how he was just like her and he didn't love himself. He blah, blah, blah. This ain't about you, bro. But yeah. before Cardi Beth could know what a symbol that of self love is, the other masks are floating off the shelf. <laughs> I, I, this may look goofy. But you gotta understand, as a kid, this stuff was scary, bruh. Floating heads chasing you? Come on, buddy. Yeah. Be real. It's a little scary. The heads chase Cardi Beth all the way back to the cemetery where she buried her replica head, and they start backing off as soon as she raises it up, accepting that the crybaby scaredy cat girl she tried to bury is her, and she should love oh. her regardless. Cardi Beth is finally able to take off the mask. Woo! Yeah, all right, let's go. Yep. She goes home and hugs her mom who have been worried about her all night And while they're talking about Cardi Beth's night, they turn around to see the little brother wearing the mask Oh, oh. No. And then oh that episode no. ends. Pretty scary, yeah, huh? pretty scary. I don't, I don't know why she didn't just burn the mask or throw it away But that's the one deemed the scariest to the general public. That's still not the one that I found the scariest But before I go over that one, I have to go over one that I found almost as scary as the scariest but for a different reason Unlike most Goosebumps episodes, this one doesn't have a possessed mask or a werewolf or anything like that. So you're probably wondering, what makes it so scary? And this yeah. one we follow a boy named Michael whose life might be worse than Cardi Beth's. Like Cardi Beth, he's constantly being bullied, but instead of it being some boys or his best friend or his little brother, it's his little sister. Oh. Sorry. And obviously, since she's the sweet, innocent little sister, she can mess with him and never get in trouble. Michael was sick of it. He wanted some payback. So the day his dad came home with one of those old big clocks and told his sister not to touch it, he saw an opportunity. He gets up in the middle of the night and makes his way towards the clock. And when he gets there, instead of doing, you know, some actual noticeable damage, he just slightly turns the head of the bird that comes out the clock, which is... Yeah, oh, that, that'll show him. But when Michael wakes yeah. up the next day, things are different. Very different. It's his birthday. Mind you, his birthday had already passed. Like, it was a few days ago. So you know what that means. Two B days, hey. Hey. Michael had gone back in time. And this is what I meant when I said this episode is scary for a different reason. Cause every time Michael wakes up, he gets younger and younger, going from a oh, tween what? to a kid oh. to a baby. That's scary. And it's not like when he turns into a baby, he's back to having baby thoughts. No, he's just Michael with the mobility of a baby. I would hate that. Even at my lowest of lows in life, I never, ever, wanted to revert back to being a baby. I got too much left in the tank to stop. And it wouldn't have just stopped at being stuck as a baby. Next day, he would have been back in the womb. The day after that, back in the sack. And eventually, she didn't to exist, existed. which is essentially yeah. death. 
Sort of. Luckily for Michael, though, he realized the way to prevent himself from getting any younger was to turn back the bird's head that he messed up earlier, effectively saving himself from having to go back in the sack and essentially death. Sort of. But like I said, although this episode is scary, it's still not the one I found the scariest when I was little. <laughs> this title belongs to no other than the Night of the Living Dummy. I told you. Oh, yeah, it's the one that's really scary. Dummy, Amy, and unlike the other two protagonists before her, Amy has no bullies or anyone like she wants though. to get revenge on. <laughs> Nothing. Just an older and younger sibling, making her the middle child. So. No one likes her. And she's definitely the most unique out of the three, too. You see, Amy's into the very, very random hobby that is ventriloquism. That's when people use dolls to talk and pretend like they're not talking. And you could have learned how to juggle or something. And one day while showing off her skills, her doll, Dennis, falls apart. Ah, bummer. Yes, you got to find something else to do. But luckily for Amy, her dad got her a new doll, a dummy named Slappy. But unlike Dennis, Slappy is no regular doll. You see, after Amy perfectly reads some Latin text that comes with Slappy, it turns out he's alive. And this oh. stupid, ugly oh. doll is the sole reason I couldn't watch this episode as a kid. For some backstory, I was already scared of dolls as a kid because of Chucky. So when I saw another evil looking doll that likes to crack jokes and he's ginger, it brought back trauma. I'm not going to sit here and act like Slappy was doing the same things Chucky was doing. He wasn't murking people or anything. But he was doing something that as a kid could be perceived worse than that. He was getting Amy in trouble with her parents, messing up family what? paintings, making fun of her family, he even attacked a family friend. And all these things may seem tame, like no big deal, right? But imagine if Amy had immigrant parents. Yeah. After Slappy doing all these things and then trying to murk Amy's dad with a guitar, my fault, Slappy. I didn't know you had it in you. Amy decides to finally get rid of Slappy by throwing him down a drain. And he does this funny oh. scream when it happens. Hey, kid. <laughs> and that very same night, Slappy returns, threatening her what? family and telling Amy she will be his slave forever. Yeah, you can try Whoa. saying that to her, Slapster, but try saying that to me, and you're gonna end up trending on Twitter, buddy. <laughs> At this point, Amy's sister finally sees that Slappy's actually alive, and they also realize Slappy is a doll, a hollow doll that you could like push over and kick and stuff, which kind of makes my fear of this dude coming after me as a kid a, a bit irrational, but whatever. Slappy chases them around the house, eventually catching them off guard and tripping Amy. And as he was standing over her talking about how the family belongs to him now or whatever, two things didn't make sense to me. One, Dang. why is the sister just watching him stand over Amy? And two, why is Amy so hell bent on grabbing the broom to attack Slappy? You literally just shoved him upstairs. Kick the dude, bruh. Yeah, anyway, while Slappy is standing over Amy, I don't know where some Someone tackles Slappy, causing him to shatter his face on the fireplace, releasing the Ooh. evil gas in his sister. Okay. What the? Amy and her sister are confused as the family comes downstairs, including her brother. Wait a minute. If the brother wasn't the one who tackled Slappy, then who did? Yeah, who? We see on the table, Amy's old dummy Dennis is alive. Nice. And they gave him the voice of Goofy for some reason. Gorsh. It's good to be back in the family. Boom. And then the episode oh. ends. Slappy eventually returns again in Night of the Living Dummy 3 with freaking Anakin Skywalker. Then he returns again in Bride of the Living Dummy where Slappy gets a shorty. And eventually returns a third time in the movies. But that Slappy sucks. Sorry, not sorry. Hopefully you guys can see why I find this show so creepy as a kid. And if you don't, I don't blame you. There's a lot of goofy people. And moral of the story? Ain't hey, kid, wait, wait. <laughs> there we go there we go what y'all think about that video though i thought about it i love goosebumps i used to read the books of goosebumps the show was kind of scary because i was a kid but that was one of my favorite shows yeah. i mean goosebumps was never scary to me so i always loved it like i always fuck with it you know what that doll remind me of tales from the crib oh i remember yeah. that movie oh. well, they had like the little black dolls yeah, yeah. <laughs> the dolls always get to me though but anyway man y'all hit that like hit that sub make sure y'all follow these lovely ladies thank y'all so much for coming out no cap man we out gang